All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and honor and glory to Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rukhak Dash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Blessings to the hopeful elect teaching this word in all sincerity and in truth, in the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. And, um, you know, I just wanted to do a quick video, you know, going into, um, you know, vocab, uh, no class Malone. You know, um, he put a video up, uh, I think it was like five days ago he put this video up, man. I don't know if it was it's an old video or if it's a, but nonetheless, I came across it and I saw it. I think he went up to the brothers over there in um, Arizona, GMS Arizona. Um, Shalom to you brothers. And, uh, you know, pretty much I just wanted to, you know, just do a little quick video, you know, dealing with. You know, this guy Volcab Malone and his, his basically his lousy attempt at trying to, um, you know, cut the brothers with the scriptures. Um, and he failed miserably, man. All right. And why do I say that? Because ultimately, man, his whole premise is, is how he's trying to sneak these other nations up into salvation. Now, he, he's a slick little bastard because at the same time. You know, he tried to tell the brothers that like, you guys believe that there's an elect to be saved and so do, so do I. I believe that too. But at the same time, he doesn't believe that the elect are going to be exclusively be of the nation of Israel, especially when it comes according to the flesh. OK, and every time he comes with that whack house breakdown of his and he tries to sneak these other nations up into this salvation. Yeah, how wish I is only coming back to save his elect and he keeps calling upon the name of Jesus, which, you know, the letter J only came about in the 1500s. Um, so I don't know where he's going with that. That's number one. And number two, you know, the, uh, the scriptures clearly tell us who the Lord is coming back for. Okay. And that's in, uh, you can find that in uh, Luke 1. Um, let's get it. Luke 1 and 60, is it 1 and 68 on down? All right. And every time... You know, Volcan Malone tries to come up with this whole thing about the other nations can make it and this and that and whatever. <clears throat> and he says that it's not about it's about being of the seed of Israel. You know, we hit him with the Romans name, which is what the brothers in Arizona did, man. So we just let the scriptures speak. All right. Because you can't get around that constant curveball that keeps getting thrown your way, Volcab. OK, how are you going to explain what the Apostle Paul said? In Romans 9. How are you gonna how are you gonna get around that? Alright, this is Luke 1 and 68. It says, Blessed be the Lord, Yahweh power of Israel. Yahweh power of Israel, of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people. His people. Who are the Lord's people? Let's get Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 6. Okay. And it says, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord, Yahweh thy power. The Lord, Yahweh thy power, have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So we, the Israelites, right, we've been chosen to be a special people unto the Lord, above all the other nations on the face of the earth. Okay, so that rules out equality right there, because there's no such thing as equality. Okay, um, and even in this kingdom, they show you that there's no such thing as equality. And that's why you got that racist organization known as NATO and the EU. Okay. Um, you know, pretty much they're telling you that there's no such thing as equality. Okay. The, the, the fact that the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. Where's the equality in that? Okay. <laughs> so this man's been given the power of the whole earth. All right. That alone should let you know. Job 9 and 24 alone should let you know that there's no such thing as equality. The earth has been given to the hand of the wicked. So you got the people that are known as the wicked, the, the, the nation of Esau, Edom, that have the power of the earth in their hands. There's no equality in that. And soon, like the scriptures tell us in 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Again, not equality. All right. And in order for one to come up, one must go down. Just like the uh, Babylonians fell. Just like the Persians fell. All right. Just like the, the Greeks fell. The Roman, the first leg of the Roman Empire fell. All right. Come on, man. Power is, is just transfer. It's power is transferable. All right. Historically, throughout the ages, you've seen power and wealth be transferred from one nation to another. All right. So anyways, um, 
I'm going to go back to Luke 1 and 68. It says, Blessed be the Lord, Yahweh power of Israel, all right? For he had visited and redeemed his people. And his people are the chosen people, which are the children of Israel. Verse 69, And have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. For us. Okay, the Israelites, right? As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. From our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, man. All right. So the, the Israelites, the elect of the nation of Israel, starting with them, are going to be saved from their enemies when Yahweh Shai comes back. OK, and only the elect, the elect of the nation of Israel. And, you know, the, we're reading this in the New Testament. This is Luke 1, 68 right here. OK, the Lord is going to redeem his people. OK. Uh, just like it says he's going to come and gather his elect in Matthew 24 and 30 on down. The elect of what? His people, the nation of Israel. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you a little bit of um, this clip here. As you can see, Volcab put it up. Um, authentic, what is that? Authentic dialogue, GMS, Israelites uh, versus Christian, what is that? DWTN, is it downtown? Uh, PHX, is it Phoenix? Arizona, all right, so um, so let's go into a little bit of it. Flesh, right? Who are is your so sorrow in my you see the beloved brother? He's reading, um, you know, uh, from Romans 9 because the brother called for a scripture called for Romans the ninth chapter, all right. So as he proceeds to read Romans the ninth chapter, you're going to hear the response of Volcab and he's, um, you know, one of his guys that he came down with. Earth, for I could wish that myself. Were a curse from Yahweh Shai right. for my brethren, right. my kinsmen according to the flesh. The Apostle Paul said, My brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Okay, so the Apostle Paul was speaking to the Israelites that will be in Rome because he said, Look, who are what? Let me, he's going to go on to say, right. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Who are Israelites? According to his kinsmen, his brethren, his kinsmen according to the flesh. Who are Israelites? No matter what, there's no way Volcab Malone can get around that scripture. There's no way any uh, 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 Christian pastor can get around that scripture. Wacky tacky Christian. There's no way they can get around this scripture, man. Okay, and the Lord is not the author of confusion. But let's hear the response of um of one of Volcab's guys in response to Romans 9. Check this out. Paul said his brethren are the Israelites. That's true. According to the flesh. Yeah, that's right. He's not a Gentile. Right. Okay. Earlier, okay. early in the book, he makes it clear that those who are circumcised go. of the heart right. are those who are his kin, not merely according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And that's in line. Yeah, but uh, hold on a minute. What was what was see? He's talking about earlier on in the book. So he just read the brother just read from Romans nine, and this geezer just said earlier on in the book he mentioned about those that were circumcised in the heart. Okay, let's hear it again. Let's hear it again, because we want to be very precise of what we're saying here. In the book, he makes it clear that those who are circumcised go. of the heart right. are those who are his kin, not merely according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Hold on a minute, he said what? Not merely according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Well, check this out. When you go earlier on in the book, who is the Apostle Paul addressing? Okay, he, again, he was addressing the Jews that would be in Rome, okay? Uh, Romans the second chapter I believe because he said earlier in the book so I did do a little bit of research earlier on in the book so let's go to Romans 2 and I believe this is what he's talking about now you can see the subheading says the Jew is condemned by the law okay and Jews are what Israelites okay it says um behold thou art called a Jew right this is Romans chapter 2 verse 17 behold thou art called a Jew Right and re and rest this in the law and make us thy boast of the Most High. So straight off the bat, the Apostle Paul, you know, is pretty much sending for the Jews. Right, pretty much making these Jews look inside themselves that walk around. All right, and they're making their boast. You know, resting in the law and they're making their boast of the Most High. Okay. Because when you read it in the NLT, what does it say? It says, you who call yourselves Jews are relying on God's law and you boast about your special relationship with him. Because at that time, you would have had, just like what Yahweh Shai got crucified for, 
All right, and, and what Yahweh Shai was saying to the wicked ass scribes and Pharisees and how they were being hypocrites. And he likened them like unto whited sepulchres. Okay. Because he said to, you know, and a sepulchre is where you keep dead bodies, you know, and white represents purity. So he's like outwardly, you know, you're like whited sepulchres, but inwardly you're full of dead man's bones. And it's the same spirit that Paul, the apostle Paul, was coming to these Jews with. Okay, because they were making their boasts about their special relationship and relying on God's law. But he was trying to tell them that it's not all about the law. Okay, it's about the faith and belief in Yahweh Shai. Okay, and it was also about examining themselves inwardly and not just, you know, acting like a, 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 a Jew outwardly, basically of the circumcision. Because that's the same thing that Yahweh Shai was cutting on wicked Israelites uh, about 2,000 years ago. All right, let's keep reading. Verse 18, and knowest his will and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. And are confident that thou thyself are a guide of the blind and a light of them which are in darkness. So they were walking around, you know, being confident that they were guides of the blind. That they were so righteous. Okay, to the people that were just lost in darkness, but they, they had the light. But they were being hypocrites. Okay, it says an instructor, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has known the form of knowledge and of the and of the truth in the law. Then listen to this. Thou therefore, which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? That thou preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? So the apostle Paul was questioning them. He was saying, look, you walking around of the circumcision. Okay, you're pra you got to practice what you preach, basically. Okay. And that's why Yahweh Shai said, it's not which goeth into the mouth which defileth the man, it's that which cometh out. Okay, because whatever you speak about, the scripture speak about, um, you know, uh, the treasure of the heart from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. The Hebrew word for heart is love, which is the mind. Okay. So you can't be going on like you're perfect, but at the same time, inwardly, you know, you're just being a hypocrite. That's why the Apostle Paul was saying, look, don't you teach yourself? And in fact, there's another scripture where the Apostle Paul said, examine thyself whether thou beest in the faith. So this is all about faith and belief in Yahweh Shai, man. Because the law can't save us. All right? And that's why the Apostle Paul was saying, look, you, you, it's not about boasting in the law. Okay? Because if it was about boasting in the law, then we pretty much, if it was all about the law, then we'd all be fucked. Because none of us can keep the law 100%. The scriptures speak about our righteousness are as filthy rags. Now, do we make void the law through faith? No. We rehearse the righteous acts. Like the scripture says in Judges 5 and 11. In fact, let's get that scripture. This is an old one. Um, which I ain't read it for a long time, but I'm going to read it anyway. This is Judges chapter 5, verse 11. It says, They that are delivered from the noise of arches in the places of jaw and water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Okay? So there you go, rehearsing the righteous acts. That's what we're doing right now. So let's go back to Romans chapter 2. Right? Um, and 22 now. It says, Thou, it says that, uh, thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest both, so you, you know, you're saying that you don't do all these things, right? But are you doing them yourself? Okay, so the Apostle Paul, so we're reading this in context now. And the Apostle Paul was really addressing the inward parts of the circle, he was addressing the circumcision. He was addressing those, those Jews that knew that they were Israelites. Okay, because you had Israelites that didn't know that they were Israelites, known as what the Gentiles, whom the Apostle Paul went to, all right, to teach them that they are the true Israelites, okay, through faith and belief in Yahweh Shai. Okay, that's why when you read in 1 Corinthians, the, um, the 12th chapter, what did the Apostle Paul say? It says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. So we were gen just like us before we came into the truth. You know, we were, you know, pretty much learning the acts, of, you know, doing the acts of the heathen, getting mixed up with it. We've been scattered among the heathen, getting lineups, eating abominable foods, eating crab lobster, you know, getting tattoos and so on and so forth. Carried away onto dumb idols, going to church, worshipping 
a Serapis, and the list goes on and on and on. All right, we were carried away unto these dumb idols as we were led, man. Okay, so ye were Gentiles. That's talking about what them Israelites that were pretty much learning after the ways of the heathen. Okay, we were led astray, uh, we were led astray basically. All right, so the Apostle Paul is going to say now what? Back in Romans 2 and 23. Okay, it says, um, it says, Thou that makest boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou the Most High. All right, and let's read it in the NLT. It says, You are so proud of knowing the law, but you dishonor the Most High by breaking it. All right, and this is the why this is why we're in this predicament in the first place is because, and when I say this predicament, I'm talking about us being in captivity. I'm talking us about us being punished, you know, and going through all, all, all types of hell, the curses, you know, uh, written down in Deuteronomy 28 and 15 on down. All right, it's because guess what? We broke God's law. We broke Yahweh's, you know, commandments. Okay, now ultimately the Lord made us go off. But at the same time, you know, we're still being punished for it because this is the most size movie. This is how he set it up. Okay, so it says, you are so proud of knowing the law, but you dishonor the most high by breaking it. All right, verse 24 in the KJV. It says, the name of Yahweh is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Okay, and why? Because they were being hypocrites. So the apostle Paul was pretty much telling the Jews about themselves. You know, making them examine themselves inwardly. Okay? And that's why he said the name of the Most High is being blasph blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. is because here it is. You're supposed to be of the circumcision. Meaning what? Knowing that you're an Israelite. Okay? You're a Jew. You're calling yourself a Jew. You are. You know, you practice the customs of the law and so on and so forth. But if inwardly you're breaking them. Alright? Or and outwardly you're breaking them. Then what you're really doing is. You know, you're polluting the Gentiles uh, frame of mind. And it starts with you. Because here it is, you're supposed to be like a benchmark, you know, you're calling yourself, you're professing, professing yourself to be a Jew, all right, but then you're breaking the law yourself, so you're basically like, that's why the scripture says a little leaven, leaven of the whole lump. This is why the apostle Paul said that, for the name of the Most High is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written, right? Now this is the point, okay, for circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law. But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Okay? So you got a circumcision of the mind, man. Okay? And who were the laws given to? Alright? Keeping the laws. The laws are given to the Israelites. Psalms 147, which one of the brothers even goes on to read. You know, I don't know if he read it before or after the, the part that I played in the clip. But I'm going to read it here anyway. Because we need to establish who the laws were given to. This is Psalms... 147 and 19, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise you the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Alright, so that's that's straight into the point. Okay, the Lord has only showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He ain't dealt so with any other nation. They haven't known them. Okay, and ultimately in the kingdom, they're still going to have to be taught the right way of how to live on the earth. That's in Isaiah, the second chapter. Okay, come and let us go up to the house of Jacob that he may teach us of his ways. The scriptures tell you that in Isaiah 2. All right, but the new covenant, the laws are going to be put on, on our inward parts. The nation of Israel, we're going to be perfect in the sight of the Lord. We ain't going to have to teach every man his neighbor saying, know you the law. For all shall know it from the least to the greatest. Okay. So that lets you know, so who's a, who's a new covenant established with? The Israelites. Okay. So let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 25. It says, for circumcision prof uh, verily profiteth. Okay. If thou keep the law. But we can't keep the law 100%. Alright, why? Because we're in this wicked, filthy flesh. And this is why we need changing. And this is why it is about the belief and faith in Yahweh Shai. Okay, because he died for our sins, man. For those that sincerely believe on him. All right, he covered our sins by his blood. All right, in fact, let's get a scripture on that. Um, Colossians chapter 2, verse... Um, 
let's get 11 right it says it says colossians 2 and 11 it says in whom you ha you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands putting off the mortal uh, putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Hamashiach. All right, let's read it in the NLT. It says, When you came to the anointed, Yahweh Shai, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. All right, remember I said it's spiritual circumcision. Okay, it says, But not by a ph uh, physical procedure, Yahweh Shai performed a spiritual circumcision, cutting away the cutting away of your sinful nature. You see that? So this this guy don't understand clearly don't understand what he's talking about because he's taking it out of context when he said when you go earlier in that same book in Romans in the book of Romans let's read let's play it again early in the book he makes it clear that those who are circumcised go. of the heart right. are those who are his kin not merely according to the flesh but according to the spirit and that's in line with Jesus. you hear what he just said let me play it one more time earlier, early in the book he makes it clear that those who are circumcised go. of the heart right. are those who are his kin, not merely according to the flesh. But those who are circumcised of the heart, right? Let me play it one more time. Earlier, early in the book, he makes it clear that those who are circumcised go. of the heart right. are those who are his kin, not merely according to the flesh, but according to Right? So he's partly right on that, Right? Are his kid not? But he, then he goes off and says, "Not merely according to the flesh." What well, it is about being a really, it starts with you being an Israelite, okay? But then it's like it's not just enough to be an Israelite. You have to actually believe, you know, that Yahweh Shai died for your sins too. And this is what we're reading here in Colossians, the second chapter, okay? Colossians two and eleven, in whom ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Yahweh Shai, a spiritual circumcision. Okay, knowing that you're an Israelite. Okay, it says buried in baptism, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of the Most High, who have raised him from the dead. So it's about a faith, right? It's about the faith in Yahweh Shai. Okay, and you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, right? Have you quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses? So this is about, you know, being forgiven, you know, our trespasses by Yahweh Shai. And only those that uh, believe and have faith in Yahweh Shai are going to have those sins blotted out. Okay, the wicked of our people, they're going to die in their sins. Okay, because they're the same wicked ass individuals that rejected Yahweh Shai when he was back on the scene 2,000 years ago when they said, Kill him, we have no king but, si but Caesar, kill him, let his blood be upon us and upon our children. Okay, so this is why that's why the scripture says, Kiss the son, lest he be angry with thee. It says, Blotting out, it says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. You see that? Let me read that verse, verse 14 in the NLT. He cancelled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. All right. So what the Apostle Paul was really saying and who he was really addressing there was Israelites that knew that they were the Israelites, Jews, you know, of the circumcision. Right, Israelites that know that they're Israelites, but then basically like, you know, being hypocrites. Okay, and he was trying to get them to really analyze himself within. All right, it had nothing to do with what this guy was saying on the clip here. All right, about, about it not being about uh, being born an Israelite according to the flesh. Let me play that one more time. Early in the book. He makes it clear that those who are circumcised go. of the heart right. are those who are his kin, not merely according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. But well, that's got nothing to do with what the Apostle Paul, you know, was really saying in, in uh, the earlier book of Romans, the chapter, the second chapter. Okay. It's got nothing to do with that because the brother just read Romans, the ninth chapter. So it is about according to the flesh. He said, who are, let me read Romans nine again, man. 
And this is what I'm saying. This is why we always throw Romans 9 out. It's because no one can get around this scripture. Anyone that tries to slide these other nations up into this, you can't get around this scripture right here. All right, Romans 9. And I'm going to go straight to the point, verse 3. For I could, for I could wish that myself were a curse from the anointed, from my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So later on in the book of Romans, he even says, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. All right, but then he wants to butcher up Romans. He said earlier on in the same book, he wants to butcher up the understanding of Romans, the second chapter, and try and go on that he ain't talking about according to the flesh. Well, it, it is according to the flesh. You have to be an Israelite. And the laws are given to the Israelites. All right, and those being of the circumcision, those that know that they're Israelites and the uncircumcision, were those that didn't know that they were um, of, the, of, of the nation of Israel, which would be the Gentiles, okay, in a heathen state of mind. That's why the Apostle Paul said, you know that you were Gentiles, just like us before we woke up to the fact that we are the Israelites. We were in a heathen state of mind, right? It says, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants, all right, which was established with the nation of Israel, and the giving of the law. We just read Psalms 147. Who are the laws given to? The Israelites. And the service of the Most High and the promises. Okay. Let me get um, Ephesians 2 and 11 as well, man. Let me get that real quick. All right. This is Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11. It says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision. See? Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircum un uncircumcision. Okay. They were basically being called heathens by the Jews. Okay, they were getting looked down upon by those of the circumcision, those that knew the Jews that were Israelite, that knew that they were Israelites. But you had the Gentiles, right? Those that didn't know that they were Israelites. Okay, and that's why they were being looked down upon. Because guess what? They would have been, you know, coming in or coming around the Jews, those of the circumcision. The uncircumcision would have been coming around those of the circumcision, right? You know, probably with, with togas on, you know, with heathen heathen practices and heathen customs. So they were definitely being looked down upon. So the Apostle Paul was saying, look, don't, don't pretty much add more logs to the fire. Okay, you're supposed to be basically setting an example. Okay, you are of the, of the circumcision. You know that you're Israelites. They don't really know that. So you don't be, don't be, um, basically you got to walk it like you talk it. Otherwise you'll be making them worse. You know, and I, and I pray this is making sense because you have to, you know, you really have to like really imagine what's being said at this time period, man. You have to really put your mind there and think how things would have been perceived back then. All right. And it's the same way that, you know, you might have, you know, dark skinned Israelites in this day and age looking down on Israelites that might look like the other nations. It's the same kind of thing. Okay. Which we teach that, hey, if that man goes back to the nation of Israel and he believes in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, then he's an Israelite indeed. No matter what he looks like. Alright? But you got even Israelites that are like that are dark skin that were in a Gentile state of mind. Case in point, you know, you, you got uh 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 Jews, we're talking about Judah be, uh, Benjamin, Levi, that didn't know that they were Israelites at one point in time, being woken up in these last days to the fact that they're Israelites, at one time time past they were Gentiles. Carried off and led away to these dumb idols even as they were led. Okay? So that's the point I'm trying to make. So let's keep going on. It says, Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That in that at that time you were without uh, Hamashiach. Becoming aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenant of promise. Having no hope and without the most high in the world. Why? Why? Because they they were they were like detached from the knowledge of them being Israelites until they were born again, until they woke up to the fact that they were Israelites. Okay, but now in Hamashiach Yahushai, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of the Anointed, which is Yahushai, which is again what we read in Colossians the second chapter. Okay, or Col Colossians, um, even the first chapter goes into it. Colossians 1 and um and 13 
Okay, it says, who have delivered us from the power. First of all, who is it talking? Who is the Apostle Paul talking to? Let's read verse 2. To the saints and faithful brethren in Hamashiach who are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from our power, our Father, and the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. And who are the saints? The saints are the Israelites. Let's get Psalms 148 real quick. Um, Psalms 148 and 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and the heaven. He also exhorted the horn of his people. Again, his people. Remember we read Luke, Luke 1 and 68? Okay, blessed be the Lord, Yahweh power of Israel, for he have uh, visited and redeemed his people. Right? So he exhorted the horn of his people. Uh, Deuteronomy 7 and 6 goes into who his people are. Thou art unholy people unto the Lord, Yahweh thy power. It's the Israelites, right? A special people unto himself above all people that are on the face of the earth. It says the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise you the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay. So it says to the saints. So the saints are the Israelites. So let's go back down to Colossians 1 and, 4, uh, 1 and 13. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into his kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Okay, and who is that? The Israelites. All right, starting with the elect. Okay, because when you read the next chapter over, what did we read in Colossians uh, 2 and 14? Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that were against us, that was against us, that was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Okay, for so by the shedding of Yahweh Shai's blood, man. You know, he, he um, like the scripture says, he counseled the record of the charges against us. All right. So, um, so let's go back to um, this clip now. And that's in line early in the book. He makes it clear that those who are circumcised go. of the heart right. are those who are his kin, not merely according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. And that's in line with Jesus. So let me because remember, he says, your mother, hey, your mother's here, right? Hey, hey, your brothers are here, they want to talk to you. He said, ah. It has to be circumcised in the heart. Okay, it has to be circumcised in the heart. And you also have to be in the flesh as an Israelite too. All right, it goes hand in hand. That's why I keep mentioning Romans the ninth chapter. Okay, who are Israelites? Who are Israelites? All right. And now Volcab's going to go and add on to what his, his, um, his guy was saying. Who's really... My brother, and that's in line with Jesus. Because remember, he says, your mother, hey, your mother. And that's, where, so, and that's in line with Jesus. And this is where Volcab's going to put his foot in his mouth, man. Because he done, he done fucked up right here. And I'm going to show you how he messed up. Okay? Because he said that was in line with what Yahweh Shai said about who is my mother and my brother. Right? Let's keep, let's keep listening. He's here, right? Hey, hey, your brothers are here. They want to talk to you. He said, ah, who's really my brother? Who's really my... Right. He didn't say nothing about flesh. He said, those who do the will of God. Right. Oh, 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 okay. So he's talking about Matthew 12. All right. So now let's go to Matthew 12. He said, look, he didn't say nothing about flesh. But see, here we go again, you know, taking things out of context, having not the spirit. You know, you don't understand what the Lord was really saying here. Um. So let's go to Matthew 12. And the point is in 50, but I'm going to start from um 46. It says, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Um, then one said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he, being Yahweh Shai, all right, the one who the world calls Jesus Christ, right? It says, but he answered and said unto him and told him, who is my mother and who, and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand on towards, towards his disciples, right, who were Israelites, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. You hear that? Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do so. Now, this is what I'm saying. So this is why Volcab don't put his foot in his mouth. Because he even goes on to say, and let's play that bit again. What did he say, man? Your brothers are here. They want to talk to you. He said, ah. 
who's really my brother? Who's really my... Right. He didn't say nothing about flesh. He said, those who do the will of God. All right. I, 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 those who do the will of God, right? So let's, let's get it. All right. So we've got the account. Verse 50. But whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. All right. And when you read it in the NLT, it says anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my brother. So he's taking this completely out of context, man. He doesn't understand what the Lord is saying there. Because when the scripture says, whosoever shall do the will of my father, he ain't talking about the heathen nations that can just do the will of his father. No. All right. It's talking about Israelites that do the will of the heavenly father. All right. Those that believe all right, of the nation of Israel. And to prove that, when you go later on into Matthew 15, all right, when the Lord is dealing with the uh, Canaan, um, the woman from uh, out of the land of Canaan, okay, a woman of Canaan, what did the Lord say to her? Matthew 15, let me go straight to the point, right? And let me start from 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And this is this woman's an Israelite, by the way. All right? She's an Israelite. Okay? But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth un after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? So earlier when you read that whosoever... You would be thinking, oh, it says whosoever. Oh, oh, that must mean anyone can make it. No. Now, the Lord is not the author of confusion, okay? So you mean to tell me that the Lord changed his, his mind later on? Oh, shit, you know what? I, I said whosoever earlier, but now I've changed my mind, you know? No, the Lord ain't... This, that's confusion, okay? It says, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Let's go over to the NLT. It says, and Yahweh Shai said unto the woman, I was only sent to help God's lost sheep. Right? The people of Israel. You see that? Verse 25 in the KJV. Then came she and worshipped and saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Uh, and she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat from the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And that was a humble response that she gave the Lord. And then, then Yahweh Shai answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So that was an Israelite woman right there. She showed humility and she believed in the Lord, man. Okay. And just because it says a woman of Canaan, that don't mean it was a heathen woman, man. All right. Meaning what? It was a woman that was from the land, probably scattered among the land of Canaan. But she was an Israelite woman. All right. Behold, a woman of Canaan came from the same coasts. All right. Because Israel has been scattered. We're scattered all over the place. All right, and this is different from the woman at the well. The woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, that was an actual heathen woman. All right, when he, the Lord told her, give me water to drink. Okay, and he told and he, the Lord told her, you know not what you worship for, um, for salvation is of the Jews. Okay, and the Jews are Israelites too, man. So, so let's go back to Matthew uh, 12 and 50. For whosoever, so Yahweh I said what? The same... That do the will of my father, that's my my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of my father in heaven, right? The same is my brother and sister and mother. Okay? But he's not sent to unto, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, like I said, you might see that word whosoever and get excited. Well, guess what? When you go into Acts 2 and 21, the word whosoever is there as well. Okay? Well, let's read it. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord... Shall be saved. So they, oh, oh, see, he says, whosoever shall call on the name. And first of all, hey, man, the name of the Lord is dreadful among the heathen. So how are they going to be calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved? So that's confusion right there. But the point is, it says what? That whosoever, just like it said in Matthew, the 12th chapter, whosoever, right? Shall do the will of my father. It says right here, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words. You see that? Ye men of Israel. So the Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel, man. All right? He ain't dealing with no other nation. Okay? So um, let's go back to that um, to that clip. I, 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 I know 
Yeah. So if you're not in Christ, that, those Old Testament only Hebrew Israelites, uh, Matthew's 12. those old, those Tanakh only guys. The brother called for Matthew 12. Yes, he said, get Matthew 12. He knew what he was talking about. He said, go for Matthew 12, which we just did. We went to Matthew 12 and we proved that Volcab don't put his foot in his mouth and he don't know what he's talking about. Okay? Because the Spirit's not dealing with him. All right? And how are you gonna how are you gonna get around Romans the ninth chapter? Who are Israelites, man? All right, how are you gonna get around that? That is a spiritual curveball that this guy can't get around. No one, no one can get around Romans uh, the ninth chapter. Okay. So um, with that, man, I'm gonna leave it there, man. I pray this is an edifying lesson. You know, so lucky if it was all over the place, but you know, um, you know, like I said, I pray it was edifying. Um, I sincerely hope that it was and um, you know until the next one to the next time I say Shalom